Minnesota Wild Dallas Stars getting ready to do battle for the uh, third time this season. They will meet a total of four as we take a look at the starting goaltenders presented by Honda and Darcy Kemper. What a job he's been uh, doing in the absence of Josh Harding. They're still trying to figure out Harding's medication as he battles uh, MS. And Nick Backstrom also on the injured list. And there is Kari Lettinen. A subpar performance for him last night, giving up four goals on just 23 shots. But right back in goal for Lindy Ruff here tonight for the Dallas Stars. Dave Strader in our broadcast position here at American Airlines Center. And uh, Daryl Ray is our man inside the glass. We've cleared the fog away so that we get a good look at Razor. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Scandella now able to move it to Prosser. Again, Prosser with his first two career game-winning goals in the last two games. Victories for the Wild over Edmonton and then these Dallas Stars. It's kind of been the story with this Minnesota Wild team lately. Just different heroes every night. Something that the uh, Dallas Stars probably will look to do as well as it comes out to the line. Here is Jordy Ben, sends it between the circles. Eakin had it on his stick momentarily. And now Garbett pokes it back out to center ice for the Stars to regroup as... Dylan flips it in, just looking for a change. And here comes that top line of Jamie Ben, number 14, Val Nachuska, number 43, and Tyler Sagan, number 91. As Granlin for the Wild works it up into the start zone. Lettinen took a swipe at it with a goal stick, and now Ben, he saw Granlin come and gave him the uh, reverse shoulder. Boy, Ben is so good at that, Razor, just being aware, even when he's carrying the puck, of where other guys are on the ice. Yeah, I, I think Matt Cook knows all about yeah, that from exactly. the meeting on Saturday night. I don't know that Jamie Ben's played as physical lately as maybe he did earlier in the year. They need that. Here's Sagan with a centering attempt that bounces out on the far side. Melagoski moved in from the point. Now it's swept between the circles. Sagan got a stick on it. And just out of the reach of Pommonville as the Stars back in their own zone. Melagoski circling back, realizing the Stars hadn't uh, completed their change. And it's... Trevor Daly off the boards for Cole. He has stood up right at the wild blue line in front of the wild bench. Gonchar holding this puck in. Gets a shot away that's deflected up high on the glass. Good opportunity there for number 55. As it comes back to the line and kept alive momentarily by Aaron Rome. And now the wild work it out to center ice. Here's Charlie Coyle, number three. One of three centers for this Minnesota team racer under the age of 22. They Got to get it from their young guys because they've got so many of their veterans out of the lineup. I think there's some similarities between these two teams in that regard, too. Some young guys they really count on. Here is Cole, makes a nice move, gets himself in the clear, and then lost the puck as it goes off the left pad of Kemper and swept out to center ice. I'm telling you, Eric Cole's been one of the star's best players here, especially at home. Good speed through neutral ice, sprung that one. Now Dylan for the Stars plays it ahead. Jamie Ben rolls it in, and uh, Kemper just watched that go wide. Now, Jordy Ben, Jamie's brother, moves in from the point. Taken away by Jamie Ben. Look for the wraparound move. Ben is one of those guys uh, we were talking this morning, Razor, played his way into Olympic consideration and eventually making the team as this puck comes all the way out to the line. Jordy Ben will fire right past him and a rebound. Where did that go? It got behind Kemper, but not in. The referee in perfect position along the goal line. Now Jamie Ben hands it off for Dylan on the far side as it's sent toward the side of the wild net. And now Jordy Ben sends it back out there. Jamie again. And it's taken away and Eric Howler will start it back. And from center ice, he'll just flip it in to finish that thought on uh, Jamie Ben. It seems like since he was named to the Olympic team racer, his play has dropped off a little bit. Maybe a little bit. I think a few guys around the league have been that way where they push so hard to be a part of that or not be a part of it as this one goes off a stick and out of play. Lindy Ruff with uh, shift on, shift off for his top line. And the, the second time they're out here, they're out against the Wilds' fourth line. Howla, the young center iceman, came close. Sagan did on this little drive-by. Big, juicy rebound that gets nudged off the pipe. Just prior to that, the speed play. Whitney wasted no time to get it up. Stoner had difficulty with the speed on the way in. That's the Stars game. They like to hit the line with a ton of speed. The Wild are going to have to find a way to put up some speed bumps against them. Orkoff couldn't collect that puck, but gets in on the uh, forecheck here for the Dallas Stars. Again, just one win since the calendar turned to 2014. As a shot there by Chason was turned aside by Kemper. And Razor, I know you've been a part of those team meetings that, uh, like the Dallas Stars had yep. this morning, and you, you would expect some energy and some jump for the Dallas Stars early on. Right. It, 
and it's exactly what they wanted to get out of the group they have wanted to get out of the group the last little while as they they tried to get out of the funk they're in the wild certainly did it they were in the midst of a horrific segment of the schedule where they had lost six in a row and they've worked their way out of it so it can be done six great losses for the wild in december there was talk about mike yo's job being in jeopardy as roussel with a shot that's blocked wide Garbutt now getting in on the four check. Scandella nudging him a bit. And Roussel gets it back, puts it out in front. A chance here for Eakin. It was blocked in front of Kemper. That's what the Wild do well. They pack it in really tight in front of their own net. Difficult to get pucks through there or get sticks free. Now Daly for the Stars up the far side. Roussel able to get it to free Goligoski for Eakin, who had the lone goal in the 4-1 loss in Nashville last night. Well, you hope for the energy raiser from the team meeting and whatever was discussed there might offset uh, the fact that the team got in not at a horrific hour last night coming yeah. in from Nashville, but well, uh, still, the Wild uh, sitting here waiting. Yeah, three and four nights for them. The Wild got the opportunity. Not a lot of teams get where they get to play an opponent, have a couple of days off and play that same opponent again. So preparation was easy for Mike Yo and his coaching staff. You knew you'd get a spirited start out of the Stars. I, I, I'm sure the Wild were prepped for that. The idea is as this moves along, perhaps the legs get a little heavier and the minds follow for Dallas, who did play last night and traveled home. Sagan chipped it to the corner. Now Nachuskin had it taken away, and it's backhanded up the near side and into the Dallas Stars zone. Ben able to clear it right back the other way, and there's Ryan Suter, who you talked about, Razor at yeah. the top. He'll play 30 minutes or more. On well, every time this line's on the ice, if they can get that matchup. Now Nachuskin battling against Coyle. Two young guys, both good size, similar size. As Whitney hands it off for a chance here that got through, and the save made by Kemper. That was Vern Fiddler that had the opportunity. We are scoreless six minutes in. And Dallas. Difference a month has made for Mike Yo in the Wild, and for the Dallas Stars for that matter. These two teams separated on January 1st by two points. Dallas had the better of it, but 14 points for Mike Yo's team, only three for Lindy Ruff. But Razor and now uh, the Dallas Stars nine points back, and both teams with about seven or eight games before the Olympic break. Well, it was interesting. Mike Yo said that he could see in the Dallas Stars in their game in St. Paul on Saturday, they looked like we looked like when we were about to come out of it. Giveaway here, and Howell paired it just wide. And a knuckler floated through there. It's interesting, too, I think, Dave, that the Wilds stuck to their guns, said we're going to get it out of this thing with stout defense. The Stars say they can't do that. Lindy Ruff was talking about it this morning, saying that they're going to have to do it through offense. They don't think they can lock games down like other clubs can. Play is just offside, and uh, that's fine if that's your formula, Razor, is a couple of players start to go after each other. That is VU number uh, 19 for the Wild and Vern Fiddler for the Dallas Stars. I don't know if we're going to have any calls here if they separated quickly enough. Just shenanigans. This this just escalated quickly on an offside. A little tug. Turn around. No punches thrown. They're going to give them each two minutes. There was the run that perhaps spark things. <laughs> yeah. They use an impactful guy in every sense of the word. It's the way he plays. Fiddler gives the stars a little spark, so the two of them will add a couple of minutes, and there will be some open ice as they play four aside, and this has not been a strength of the Dallas Stars this season, who have been outscored 8-2 to two when yeah. playing four aside, which in some ways is a little bit surprising considering the speed and, and skill that they like to play. Yeah, Lindy Ruff uh, talked with us for quite a, a period of time after the closed door meeting race. You know, he talked about energy and passion. Uh, so we see a little bit of that from yep. Vern Fiddler. Of course, he's got to be directed the right way. You don't want to put your team shorthanded. But four skaters aside here, as Jamie Ben flips one in on Kemper, who just steers that aside. Now Pominville with it. He'll slide it across. Granlin, who will represent Finland in the upcoming Olympics, one of five Olympians on this. Minnesota Wild roster. Of course, a couple of them are out of the lineup with injury. Zach Parisi, who is skating. Mike Yo saying he wants one more real good practice at least out of Parisi before he's in the lineup. As Sagan sends it across for a one-timer just wide. Well, Ligowski with a centering pass, and it's taken away, and the Wild Brodine will kind of circle around and regroup. Hands it off to Jason Pominville. Now for Coyle. Coyle takes it wide on Daly. Coyle looks to the front. Decides to hang on to it one-on-one -on -one against Daly. That's 
generally what you see in these four on four now out to the point and it was uh, Eakin that got a stick out of this Kari Lutton and he'll settle it down back behind the Dallas net Nico Koibu who will hopefully play for Finland if his ankle will permit and he's getting closer to returning for the Minnesota Wild as well the captain of this team and many feel will be the captain of a very strong Finnish team that will compete in Sochi for Olympic gold Coyle sends it across now. Niederreiter. He gets a shot away. Letting him the save. And a rebound opportunity set up high and off the glass. Well, that didn't miss by much. Coyle on the follow-up. Here's Niederreiter, who will represent Switzerland. In the upcoming Sochi game. Now for Coyle, who's roughed up by Dillon. This is kind of a wild game. They, they like the cycle game. They're not a, a real fast and, and expressive team off the rush, if you will. But when they get it deep, they can work teams. Now to Chuskin trying to make something happen. A little stutter step move there on Sutter. This is a great matchup here. KG veteran who plays a lot of minutes against the Chuskin. And as the two players come out of the box, Villa and Fiddler. Fiddler tries to make a play back to the point. Gets the puck again. Tried to go down the boards with it. It was blocked and picked up by Peverly. Save, rebound, chance, and a good stick there by Niederreiter. He leaned on the stick of Fiddler, didn't allow him to get that rebound. Well, he's an impressive guy. Uh, good work at both ends of the rink by Nino Niederreiter. Close offensively and maybe a, a goal saver in his own zone. Peverly will put this deep in the wild end as Ballard plays it there. And the wild come out with it. Fontaine hands it off as Cook back hands it in. But it just played that puck out in front of the line where he's not allowed to touch it, but it goes past in that area. Now, delayed offside here as the Wild will play it back to center ice. Here is Cole, right back on the counterattack. Eric Cole sets it up for Ben. It's off a stick. Rodziak couldn't pick it up. Now Sagan, a hammer one that was blocked by Fontaine, who was right in front of him. That's at least three of those where the Wild have packed it in again in the slot area. And although the Stars... It looks like they're going to have a chance. They can't get it through to Kemper. Well, starting Saturday, watch the sports most storied surfaces are transformed into sheets of ice so the biggest teams in hockey can settle the score outdoors. The Coors Light NHL Stadium Series Saturday on NBCSN, Sunday on NBC. I'll be there uh, at Dodger Stadium on Saturday along with uh, Anson Carter, Brian Englom, Jeremy Roenick. Shorts and T-shirts for that so, one? <laughs> we'll see. They're, they're talking. Where's some sunblock, Strader? Yeah, that's it. I'll need it. They're talking mid to high 40s uh, once the sun goes down and we get into game time. It's going to be an interesting scene, to say the least. Beach volleyball courts and roller hockey games going on as this shot the side of the net is handled by Kemper. And two, by the way, very good hockey team playing with the Ducks and the Kings. Now, apparently, with a wraparound, that hit a stick in front. It was Prosser, I believe, that was there for the Wild. As it's chipped ahead by Zucker and into the Dallas Stars zone. Dylan will skate it out. Center right, he'll hammer one in that uh, Kemper will drop and decide. I better move this to the corner. I think he was going to hold on to it. He got a little ahead of himself and actually didn't have it in his body. It dropped off his pad and in behind him. Now Eakin had it knocked off of his stick on the... Stars regroup back on the counter attack and here is Roussel with a shot that is wide of the Minnesota goal as it's lifted out to center right. Boy, the Wild are not moving the puck very well under their own zone right now. That was a big focus for Mike Yell. Penalty there. Yeah, I think Mitchell's stick came up accidentally, but I believe we will have a Dallas Stars power play as we'll hear from that man when we come back. Lindy, you wanted an energetic start to this one here tonight. Looks like you're getting it, but you're not being rewarded so far with it. Is that disturbing in any way? Yeah, we've seen this story before. You know, we've, uh, we've had some good opportunities. The energy's good. I think our puck movement has been excellent. What about your power play lately? I know it was a big focus for you for a while. It, it's humming now. You're going to get an opportunity here. What's been better? You know, I think we're shooting quicker. You know, it's one or two pass. The puck's going to the net. We're looking for second opportunities. Thanks for this. Thanks. And there was the high-sticking penalty right as we went to break on Tory Mitchell. So the Dallas Stars power play, which uh, has been on a roll four consecutive games. They have scored a goal. This is presented by Mercedes-Benz, the first power play of this game. As it comes to Sagan, he tried to get a pass through to Chase on in front. Now a loose puck. Nobody seems to be able to get control. Cleared to the line, and Goligoski has it there. The Stars will set it up. Ben with a quick shot. Chase on screening. Kemper has it under the glove. Boy, Kemper's a big body in there, even when he's on his knees at 6'5", and he's a big part of the 
resurgence of this Minnesota Wild Club, you know, down to your third string goaltender and you're getting elite net mining out of him. Didn't see that one hit the body in front, but when he's down on his knees, you can see there his shoulders are parallel with the crossbar, which is about four feet off the ice. Listed at 6'5", 205, as you see the uh, the rankings of the Stars power play, the wild penalty kill. Again, that tied for 28. That's for the season, obviously, but they've been better of late. Dallas has Sagan shot here just a little bit too high, and good job by Goligoski to hold in the Granlin clearing attempt. Sagan far side. Ben settles it down. He'll try the wrist shot that doesn't get through. He gets it right back. The Dallas captain. A little give and go there with Cole. Now it comes out to Goligoski. He's got Bayou, the penalty killer in front of him, who does not have a stick. Yeah, Bayou gave his stick to Scandella, the defenseman. Forwards always do that. They're closer to the net, have to sweep it away. It comes to Sagan. He had some room there. And as Kemper was moving from his left to his right, kind of misfired by number 91. He gets another opportunity here. Now Sagan. Top of the circle for Chason off his stick, and Cole will pick it up on the far side. Now Ben quickly wheels it to Sagan. Sagan hands it off. Here's Goligoski. Has to back up and regroup. Still plenty of time on this power play. As it comes to Sagan with a shot, Candela, that stung him a bit. That original seam pass never gets through there. Veyu has his stick. Now here's Ben again, puts it right through the blue paint, a shot on the right pad, saved by Kemper, he was there to deny Tyler Sagan. Man, did the Wild need that. <laughs> Sagan leaning on the net, <laughs> exhausted at the tail end of all this. Tyler Sagan's had multiple opportunities with the puck on his stick in scoring areas. There's the backdoor, great stop. Boy, and Big Kemper gets fouled up, watch his stick. His stick ends up following him up, he just leaves it underneath of his armpit and makes the blocker stop. Boy, that's just an instinct yes. move, isn't it there, Razor? I mean, he, he lets go of the stick, otherwise he doesn't get his blocker over there. Boy, were the Wild in a bad spot, though, with a player without a stick killing a penalty. I often wonder whether the best play for any player, whether he breaks the stick or, or uh, ends up losing his stick, especially in the uh, first and third periods where your defensive end is close to your bench, why not just go to the bench and get a stick? Yeah. You know, and, and live with the fact that that you're you're going to be at a disadvantage for a second but i mean even if AU gets this puck any way shape or form he's not going to be able to do anything with it anyway yeah he broke it uh, on the shot block and as you pointed out razor you kind of handled the baton to yeah good smart interchange there now Suter plays it around on the far side whitney hands it off for gonchar quickly for peverly now is the second power play unit out here for lindy Ruff. And between the circles, Eakin's shot was blocked by Brodeen. Brodziak will play it up the far side. And Cook will finish the job as Mitchell comes out of the box. A couple of shots on goal and a couple of other opportunities, Razor, that uh, the Stars unable to capitalize on that power play. Yeah, not, not crisp. Good hit there. Good hit by Clayton Stoner as a centering pass to flex out to the line. Goligoski has it. He waits. Now gets it out to Fiddler. Score! The man changed direction in front. Roussel was there in front of Kemper, and the Dallas Stars get the all-important first goal. They lead it one to nothing. This might be Antoine Roussel's goal. What a play at the blue line, though, to keep this alive. They take it in, and it was Roussel that got belted by Stoner along the boards. This comes back to the blue line, and right on the blue line with Heatley in his face. That pass to get through. Heatley's out of position. They, they drive this to the net. Just simple hockey on the backside of a, a real good pressuring power play. This one deflects in on its way and sails past a bewildered Darcy Kemper. Yeah, that was going well wide until yes. it, it either hit uh, Roussel or, or Clayton Stoner, the wild defenseman that he was tied up with. Now Zucker with it. We'll see how the Wild responds. They haven't had the puck at this end of the ice very much no. after 11 to 1. As Foster sends it off the end boards. Zucker in front, and the misfiring was Gramlin. And right back the other way, Ben trying to lead Nachuskin. It's just a bit out of his reach, and Suter will settle it down. Ryan Suter pushes it ahead. Niederreiter deflects it into the Dallas Stars zone. Jordy Ben hands it off for Dylan, gets it right back as we hit six minutes remaining here in the opening period. This will go for icing against Dallas. 
assisted by number 38, Hernan. Take another look at that goal that the Stars scored that certainly got rewarded for all the zone time they've had. Good play at the blue line. Fiddler with the shot. It's it. This thing was going wide by a considerable margin when it's sent back in. Trying to throw it at the net. Again, the, the Wild have been good at shot blocking here in the opening period, so sometimes you have to plow around the stump, and it looks like that's what Fiddler was trying to do and got rewarded. Off a face-off play, Commonville tried to cut to the front. Coyle tries to go back to Heatley. Nachushkin, though, disrupts that and hands it off now for Jamie Benn, and he'll lift it in wide of the Minnesota net. Temper hesitated for a moment, then came out to play it. Now Suter for Heatley, for Coyle up the middle. Stars collapsed on that. Played to the boards by Fiddler. Fiddler and Galagoski got the uh, assist. As Cole takes the pass to the middle. Cut to the outside. Gets around Ballard. Tried to put it to the front, but Ballard recovered at least to get a stick on it. Now Rome centering attempt. Picked up by Fiddler. Puts it right out in front. And Brodeen was there for the Wild. He'll just chip it up the glass. Does not get it over the glove of Fiddler, who holds it in. Well, he's been like a full-court press for the entire first 15 minutes of this game, huh, Dave? And, Razor, it's been the, the veteran guys that are showing a lot yeah. of energy. Cole and Fiddler. Players like that. The Wild just have not been able to skate through this. They've done this a lot. Give the puck back, give the puck back. Not transition it up the ice. And bring any kind of attack now the stars making a defense changes Mitchell across the line for the wild Went off down low looking for Bayer Howla is there as well again coming up his uh, first career goal in the win over Dallas as Prosser's shot is wide and Scandella will have to uh, chase back after it what was it that Mike Yo said to us this morning, Razor? He said, we've been defending well. I just wish we could do it less. Yes. And, and, well, they and that's not happening right no, now. No, no. And he was putting a lot of the pressure on, on his defense to skate with the puck. This might have went straight out. I think we are going to get a delay game penalty. We will get the official call when we come back. one nothing Stars. Looking at guys with stars on their jersey, good time to tell you to call Star Star NHL. To download NHL Game Center, get a free premium upgrade only on Verizon. Enjoy exclusives like free live NBC National Games. Never be without hockey. And you saw it, Razor, just as we went to break Justin Fontaine uh, from deep in his own zone. Well, a little bit of pressure. Uh, hurried up the boards, just gets a little too much loft. Sends it in to the stands, and he... Puck shot out of play from in behind your own blue line or batted out is a penalty and this does not help Mike Yo's cause here in the first period where they have indeed been on their heels and really mauled by a Dallas Stars team that seems to have a, a lot of pep in their step. Scored right after their first power play and now get their second. So it's not always about uh, scoring on the power play which of course you want to do but sometimes it does uh, just give you some momentum. And that's what it seemed to do the first time. We'll see what the Stars can do with their second power play opportunity. Ben takes a lot of drive. He's taken more face-offs this year as a winger than he did last year as a center <laughs> iceman. Rodin trying to play it along the end boards. Hit a couple of bodies there. Now Ben able to regain control. Out to Cole. He'll wind up. He'll hammer one that is blocked to the corner. Now Suter with it, plays it around before Brodziak can get there. Goligowski did, now it's picked up by Suter. They look to do something here shorthanded, hands it off for Cook. Cook tried to go back to the front, band on the pass. He ended up breaking his stick. It was weakened maybe by a play in his own zone. What a smooth move by Suter to break that up and then take it up ice. Effortless. Now Ben, bothered by Bayou, Ben able to... Keep control out to Goligoski, tees it up, now he lets it go. Oh, that was blocked, and Bayou is in some difficulty, but he gets right back onto his skates, because that's what hockey players do. As a cold on the power play in the Dallas Stars with a 2-0 lead. Tory Mitchell was the guy who got buckled by that shot block, and... You're going to block a lot of shots when you spend as much time in your own zone as the Wild have here in the first. Committed to it, but in no position to chase after. Another good play by Goligoski, patiently at the point. 
this time Cole just threaded the needle. Finds the far side. Kemper couldn't find this through the through the crowd. And beat him high glove. Yeah. He has been quite a story uh, for the stars who needed, as you mentioned earlier, Dave, the veteran leadership and some production. Another goal for him. And a timeout for Mike Yo in the middle of a little while. And of course, uh, we saw the, a little bit of frustration from Eric Cole when he had that uh, breakaway and the, the puck kind of slid off the stick early. But sometimes players realize, okay, I, I, it's going to be my night. I'll get another chance. So he didn't let the frustration of missing that first breakaway bother him at all as he had a couple of opportunities after that and takes advantage of the power play chance to make it 2-0. Had a real slow start to the season. Only had a couple of goals in the first two months, but has picked it up. Torrey Mitchell is left down the hallway to try to walk that block off in behind me. They've had some awkward moments in their own zone here in the opening frame, Dave, with broken sticks and hobbled players and just a ton of time spent in behind their own blue line. Now Garmin takes it all the way to the corner. Well, it's one thing to realize that the team you're playing is struggling. No, they had a closed-door team meeting. No, you're sitting there waiting when they played the night before. But the uh, Wild looked totally unprepared uh, for the energy that the Stars have brought, at least in this first period. Well, and historically, Minnesota's not had a ton of success in Dallas. They've really had the upper hand in St. Paul over the Stars, so it's uh, turned into a homer rivalry. Goligoski and Jamie Benn getting the assist on the power play goal by Cole to make it 2-0. You end up along the boards again. The shots are 12-2, so the puck has not been at this end of the ice much at all here. In the first 20 minutes, Scandella back to the line. Brandlin sends it along the board. Thomasville lets it go. Prosser moves up for the right point. Now Niederreiter with it. Dylan working him over. And doing it emphatically. Now Palmerville had it knocked off his stick. And Garvin just chips it out to center right. Yeah, the Wild trying to get a cycle game going there. And the Stars have just pinned things up the outskirts of the rink. Good hard team hockey there. Now Jordy Ben with it. Just buying a little time, plays it off the glass safely back past Brodeen, who's pressured now by Ray Whitney. Brodeen able to regain and forced back by Cole. He's such a good young player. Mobility, poise. Daryl Sador, their assistant coach, said he's he's by far the best young player he's ever seen play in this league. Well, that's quite a compliment for yeah. a guy who was a pretty good young player himself. And a lot of people thought that Brodeen would be a part of that Swedish Olympic team. Yeah. That just shows you the, uh, the depth, depth of them. Yeah. Now Suter angles it off the boards, Heatley able to recover here with just over a minute remaining in this first period. Zucker will send it deep into the star zone as Lutton settles it down for Goligowski. Who has assisted on both of the star's goals. Nearly left it there for Fontaine as he fanned on a pass attempt. Now Trevor Daly. Tries to go across to Goligoski, who plays it up the far side, and it's redirected by Sagan out of play. We'll go back to the Stars' power play goal from Eric Cole, and, and that block that, that led to some open ice. Mitchell with the commitment up top, pain searing through his body, and as he tries to get down low and contest this, he just can't get there. It's a free lane for Eric Cole to walk. Right shot, left-hand side. He has a real good peek at the far side on Kemper despite the size and the stars are getting rewarded for their hard work here tonight and that has not happened for them since last year literally you see that uh, streak now continues five games with at least one power play goal and we're not even through uh, one period of this one as a centering pass here and it's into the glove of Kari Lettinen as we have our first uh, little bit of action around the Dallas Priest area. We remind you to stay with us in our first intermission for the Lexus Intermission Report. Russ Taylor, J.R. and Keith Jones will talk about the Devils taking it to the Blues. And uh, is there a deeper meaning in the find of Bob Hartley? And we talked a little bit with Mike Yo uh, about what happened there in, uh, in Vancouver between Calgary and uh, the Canucks. Yeah. Because every coach is looking at it and saying, okay, are, are you saying 
there are players that are dressed and legally in my lineup that I can't put on the ice for the opening faceoff, and uh, it, it raises a lot of questions about what happened, certainly the response. I think that debate is going to rage, don't you, at the general manager meetings? And yeah. March. Yeah, they got a couple of things to talk yes, about that do. happened that night. They always that, do. Well, that puck off the netting that went in off of Jonathan Quick uh, is this. There's play a penalty is behind down. the yeah. uh, play here. <laughs> but the only line that's been able to spend any time in the Dallas zone is this one. Pominville, Niederreiter, and, and Granlin. And, and it, gets, it gets blown up by a penalty to Niederreiter. Right off this face, they get a late period face off in the Dallas zone, a chance to do something. 22 meter rider with a quick cross check to the back on the Chushkin, and away he goes. Interference to call on him. They're loading up a power play that looked good, then scored, now gets another chance. Boy, is this an important 24 seconds for oh. the Minnesota Wild? You got to think, Mike Hill, when he had his time out, trying to settle his, his crew down a little bit, and mentally they're just trying to get to the first intermission without any more damage. And a shot here sails just wide as a couple of players tangled up between the Brodziak circles. That is uh, Brodziak and Cole. Cole has his helmet ripped off as Brodziak was really working him over. Play continues. I know, they, there's been no there, whistle. There's, there's no whistle. It was like a sideshow. Goligoski said, I got to get down there and and, uh, and help my teammate. He had the puck, and then he realized, wait a minute, there, there hasn't been a whistle. Was that was bizarre. Cole throws a hit on Matt Cook at the end of it all, and, and we do have a little bit of passion and energy in this game. A fractious finish. Right off the draw. Two very uh, consequential face-offs at the end of this. Right from the face-off. Down he went. Got bulldog to the ice. Disheveled. Rocked a little bit. And then away they went down to the other end and finished it off. They separate. With a ton of unpleasantries ahead, I suspect. 2-0 the Dallas Stars over the Minnesota Wild at the end of the first 20 minutes of play here at American Airlines Center. The struggling team is ahead of the team that's red hot coming in. Stay with us. The Oasis Information Report after this. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. And by yes. Miller Lite. It's not just a good time. It's Miller time. Back at American Airlines Center here in Dallas where the Stars lead the Wild 2 to nothing. as we take a look at our sprint storyline. And uh, the story has been all Dallas Stars. And this goal that originally was given to Roussel has been credited to Vernon Fiddler as uh, it hit off the Minnesota Wild player in front. And then Cole on the power play after having a great uh, breakaway opportunity he kind of mishandled earlier in the game. And Alex Goligowski with a couple of assists. And it's a 2-0 lead for the Dallas Stars. Dave Strader back along with Daryl Ray. And, of course, uh, Nino Niederreiter took that penalty late in the first period. So this third Dallas power play razor carries over here in the second period. And it allows them to gain or regain their momentum once again. Wild have to get through this if they have designs on coming back in this one. Brodeen able to jam it all the way back down. Terry Lettinen, who faced only three shots in that first period. And it's funny because we were talking about Lightning this morning with Lindy Ruff and, and uh, you made the comment as well, uh, Razor, that he seems to be a goaltender that plays better when he's busy. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't He gets a little antsy when he has to wait around a little bit. Something he has to learn if this club is going to be a puck possession team and outchance teams on a consistent basis. Oligoski across the line. Now it is jammed through, picked up by Sagan, coming late, and a save made by Kemper. Well, they almost exposed the Wild with a little over-pursuit on their way back into their own zone on this penalty kill. Many had a real rough start with their penalty killing and have been chasing their stats ever since. They're in the bottom third in the league. Everybody collapsed down low, allows that weak side defenseman to come late. This, In this case, because they're on the power play, a forward. They run a 1-3-1. Goligoski, the only D-man out there right in front of the net. Good save by Kemper, who's going to have to do that repeatedly here in the second. Good job by the youngster Howler for Minnesota on the draws. They won it to the board. Now they start just trying to outnumber the Wild on the puck, and they regain possession here. Eakin sends it in deep. 
Or top back hands it now for Whitney. Knocked away from him and Tory Mitchell, who we saw hobbled by that uh, shot block in the first period, is back out on the penalty kill. Now Brodziak gets to it for the Wild. Just over 20 seconds remaining in the Nino Niederreiter minor penalty. Greatest name trade in the and maybe league history. Oh yeah, huh? absolutely. Clutterbuck for Nina Ryder. That's it. <laughs> absolutely. Here's Eakin. Sweeps it to the net. Save Kemper. Battling for the loose puck. Shooter is kind of heavily. Now it is swept around to the right point. Gonchar has it there. Angles it off the boards. Eakin looking for a shooting lane. Save made. Rebound comes out in front. Nina Ryder's out of the box. A little more aggression from Darcy Kemper in the pipes for the Wild here in the second. Maybe a little deep on the Cole power play goal in the first. Bob Mason is their goaltending coach and a very good one. May have, may have had a word with him in between periods about getting some depth to his game. Here comes Fiddler on the rush. Gets a shot away. Kemper makes the save. Some contact there. Saucy glove grab. That's two of those here early in the second period. Wild burp the puck up on their way going toward the Stars end and the Stars in transition on the gallop. Net drive by Roussel. Fiddler with the shot toward the net. This one though picked up and Vern Fiddler's got a little pep in his step here tonight rewarded with the muddy goal we'll call it in the first period that yeah went off stoner and in but well, I had a chat with him while he was uh, taking yes, part in the, in, in the uh, in the pregame uh, soccer uh, match that the guys uh, on most teams get involved with in fact when I came out of the makeup room raises the ball hit me and hit the floor so they said I'm I'm eliminated well that was quick it was <laughs> I, said, I never even had a chance Either rider with it now, pulls up, hits the late man, or tried to, Stoner, went through him. And now Jordy Ben with it. And he calmly waits for Tyler Sagan to get open. Sagan now, that was a bit behind Dylan who made the play. And uh, icing here, a little confusion, yeah. I think, on whether it was going to be icing. Watch out of market games with NHL Game Center Live. One subscription lets you watch on your computer, smartphone, tablet, and connected devices. Visit NHL.com slash GCL. Chance in front for Heatley, and it got a little bit too close to his feet. Couldn't handle it. Back to the line, Brodine. Jonas Brodine fired it wide, and now the Chuskin will scoop it out to center ice. Across now for Jamie Benn. Drops it for Tyler Sagan. Sagan throws it back in front. And Kemper was sliding, anticipating a redirection that never happened. Suter hung right with Ben on his way in there too. Right from a, a face off in their own zone that they didn't fully gain. And the Chuskin will carry it back center ice. Uh, broken up at the line by Suter. Coyle has it. The Razor, I know you see this team on an everyday basis. And this line, when they were coming early in the season, one of the best. Yes, and uh, because of that, had their line circled on every team's whiteboard prior to play and essentially I think clubs just started saying we're gonna shut those three down and take our chances with the rest and it's worked out well for the opposition time, time. now Fiddler hands it off for Whitney trying to get it back deep in the zone it was blocked by Scandella now Nita Ryder will play it ahead for Gramlin he is slowed down by Trevor Daly as Eric Cole angles it off the board Curious to see what the energy level in this game as it moves along, huh, Dave? The Stars, of course, played last night, three and four nights. The Wild gave a couple up in the first period, but might get stronger as this moves along. They will need to, won't they? As Gonchar shot the, was blocked by Granlin. They got to do this better. You know, once they do gather pucks in in their own zone, do something with it on their way up the ice. You know, Minnesota Wild uh, coming in ranked 26th in the 30-team National Hockey League in terms of goals per game at just over 2.3. And missing some weapons. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> in a big way. Garbage shot is blocked. And now Roussel. And it knocked away by Stoner. It's back out to center ice. Gonchar slings it across for Aaron Rome, who plays it softly back inside the wild line. Keith Ballard has it there for Stoner. Now plays it ahead for Brodziak. Pretty good transition here through the neutral zone. A shot handled by Lettman. And 
no rebound. As we take a look at the Pringles player profile, now we're going to look at the 18-year-old Valerie Nachuskin, of course, who na was named to the 2014 Russian Olympic team, 10th overall pick in the draft uh, last June, fifth youngest ever to play for this franchise, which, of course, originally was the Minnesota North Stars. And talking to Jim Nill, the general manager responsible for drafting this, I talked to him this morning, and he said, you know, this kid, beyond his years, is strong on the puck. When he uh, first came into the league and said going into the corner in this Western Conference against some of the big defensemen raiser, he said he... He would come out with the puck more often than not, and that's unusual for a kid that young, no matter how big he might be. He's going to be a barbarian when he fills out and gets yeah. strong there. You know, the guy on the other side that's like, like that is, is young Charlie Coyle. I'm really impressed with him, and he is bull strong on the puck. A few years older than uh, Nachuskin, but still uh, young. Yeah, it's staggering that you have an 18-year-old that can hang, <laughs> dominate play physically in this league. Now Peverly pushes it ahead and decides to turn back as the uh, Stars will make a change here. Five and a half gone by in the second period. Two nothing Dallas in this uh, matchup between Central Division teams separated by nine points. A hitly shot is deflected by Lettinen and that goes up onto the netting and out of play. Well, one of the things uh, Val Nachushkin had to learn coming over from playing where he was Rookie of the Year at the KHL is a little bit about back pressure. He thought he would have more time with the puck early on. He would get hounded by people from behind. I think what he's also learned is that he can be a good tracker too. Kind of worked his way up. Wendy Ruff gave him baby steps early on. Look out here is a scramble near the Dallas net. This line has, has been the line that has maybe sopped up the most of the void of not having Parisi and, and Koivu for the Minnesota Wild. And they're getting chances here now. Zucker with a shot that goes wide. And now Sagan on the far side, just able to chip it out to center ice. The Wild look like they want to get right back on the attack. And Coyle just over skates and bend back the other way. So the two top lines going head to head here. There's a crosser pressured by Nachuskin. As it's angled up the fireboards and jumps over the stick of Ben. And now Sagan deflects it into the wild zone as that uh, line starts to head to the bench as they'll make a change. Boy, what a chance for Coyle right in front, though. Bang, bang, play. They, they've had two or three quality opportunities and haven't been able to convert. Much better second period from the wild here. Here is Cole across the line. Hands it off. Fiddler put it right through the... Goal crease area, and our Niederreiter able to clear. And good work by Granlin to come all the way back and shadow his man right to the front of the net. Now Whitney drops it off. Cole sends it in front for a chance. Redirected Kemper for the save. Whitney could not control the rebound. Hands it off for a drive that is stopped by Kemper, who somehow got in front of the traffic as Eric Cole and Michael Granlin were both in the blue paint area with Kemper. Boy, like, like Larceny there from Big Kemper. <laughs> The Wild were changing and turned the puck over up the ice, ended up chasing back to their own net, survived it because of the big guy in the pipes. Now Roussel, while the near boards, couldn't get it out. Suter angles it back in wide of the Dallas net. Cook can do it. Cook, Fontaine, and Brodziak out here now for Mike Yo. We need to get a couple of back-to-back -back shifts, not have just one line doing all the work. What a smart pinch by Suter to keep this going the first time. Now he'll try to shoot it wide. It's blocked by Gonchar, but slapped away by Fontaine. Now Brodziak has a band on his centering attempt. Still has it. Hands it off down low. Good poke check there by Kari Lettinen as he read that very quickly. Like a lizard's tongue there. Now Brodziak for Cook again. Sets it in front. Redirects and saved. Opportunity for the... Put back is covered up by Kari Lettinen. Wow. And I think we're going to have a call here. Looks like the official down along the end boards is pointing toward the penalty box area. We will wait and see what the call is. Meanwhile, at the other end, how about Darcy Kemper to keep it at 2 nothing? Similar saves at both ends. Both netminders make this more with their minds than their legs. Stay deep. Allow yourself to make that save at one end and then Lettinen answers it at the other on the tail end of that or the aftermath of it. Roussel comes in and lawn chairs Brodziak into wow. the end boards. Wild to the power play. In their last game, which was against these Dallas Stars, they were 0 for 3. They are 
just over 18% on the season. 0 for 12 in their last five games. Well, this is where they really miss Parisi and, and Cloyvu. They are the engine of their power play. So that's not hard to understand. Well, Garbett back the other way. As Kortoff with him. He picks up the loose puck. You know, Parisi, with all the time he's out, he's still listed yeah. among the uh, league leaders in power play goals with eight. He's close to coming back. That has to be heartening to the Wild. Well, you take any team and say, we're going to take your top center, your top left winger, one of your puck-moving defensemen and both your goalies, and, you know, have at it. The Wild have done a terrific job to, to not only stay in this playoff race, but actually get a little separation as this yeah, puck no is clear. Had a wonderful January so far. Can't get this going right now, though. Uh, Grand little slide it across. Odin forced to back up. And there's very, some pressure there from Eakin. Yeah, a very aggressive penalty killing from the, the Stars. Seen that recently from them. Forced the other side to make good plays under pressure. Jamie Ben rather with a nifty move as it looked like there was going to be a collision. He avoids that, leads a rush the other way, and the shot is swept up on the netting and out of play. Randy Ruff has started to use Jamie Ben to kill penalties again. He hasn't done it the last couple of years. And you know, the caveat with that for any coach is the risk, like you saw in the first period with Tori Mitchell. If they don't wear shot blockers, and a lot of guys wear extra protection on their skates if they play on that side of special teams as a forward because you're expected to be in shooting lanes. You run the risk of a, a bone breaking. They don't want that to their captain. Now Gailey with it. There's been some discussion because of uh, the rash of injuries related to blocking shots with the lower extremities that Minnesota Wild talking about maybe uh, having some of their players wear those guards on their skates. A lot of players just don't like it, Razor. No, bulky. Some guys don't like wearing visors, too. Yeah. Almondville just out of his reach, and it's sent back the other way, and Wild have failed to get a single shot on the power play with uh, Antoine Michel in the box, who now skates over to the Dallas bench, and as Gonchar plays it ahead, intercepted by Pominville. Pominville back across the line, takes a look to the front, covers a pass that's knocked down, and starts Ray Whitney back the other way. Hands it off now for Fiddler. The two KG veterans trying to make something happen here as Whitney thought about going back to the line, instead tried to go back to Fiddler. It's knocked away in the Wilds. Danny Heatley has it now on the left wing side. And he'll send it deep into the Dallas Stars zone. Larry Lettman got down there as Prosser. The defenseman was in there yeah. quickly. Tail end of a shift. They were trying to get their forward change in. He read that, jumped up on the rush with them. Good exit by the Wild to get out of their own zone with Pominville Grand Grandwin and company on that shift. They've been much better at exiting out of their own zone here in the second. Uh, Dylan, that was jammed up by Cook. Covered by Gonchar, who plays it back to the youngster, and Dylan plays it ahead now for Jamie Benn. Hands it off on the near side, Nachuskin with an extra pass. I thought he might cut to the net with that, and we're going to have a penalty here. And a high-sticking call. When we come back, we'll hear from the Wild coach, Mike Yo. The uh, message in the timeout back in the first period and between periods, was it the same? Yeah, I mean, we, we can't come into a game like this and 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 not have the, the work ethic that you need, not be ready to move your feet, not be ready to battle. And uh, and we started to pick it up a little bit here to start the second period. And, uh, obviously, that power play for us wasn't what we were looking for. And now we're uh, facing the big kill here. What if anything changes when you're when you're chasing from behind like this in a hockey game? Well, I, I, we got to start playing our game. I mean, first and foremost, before we even think about coming back, we got to get ourselves in it, both physically, mentally, and uh, once we do that, then we can start looking at some other stuff too. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. So indeed, Mike Yo's team shorthanded for the fourth time tonight. Dallas Stars already won for three on the power play and scored their first goal just after their first power play expired. Well, the Stars' uh, power play has uh, provided momentum, and it has also provided a goal. Justin Fontaine in the box for high sticking. Rogowski with an assist on each of the two goals in this game now carries into the wild zone. Prosser you know, awkwardly went down as he tried to shoot that puck out of the zone. Comes to chase on a one-timer here by Goligoski and Kemper will cover up. We go back and uh, take a look at this uh, 
Had a strange play with a high stick. Yeah, it was second time in the game that Fontaine finds himself in the box trying to play the puck and ends up whipping Sagan right in the lips. Yeah, an accidental penalty. Yeah. They, they say you're always supposed to be in responsible for where your stick is. I don't know that he could have done anything about that. Yeah, it rolled up uh, Sagan's yeah. stick after Sagan had, had the shooting motion. That was what was uh, kind of weird. You know, they, they give the players the benefit of the doubt under the rules if you're in the act of shooting right. and follow through. It's not a penalty. And I guess in the act of hacking or whacking, <laughs> you get away with it too. Wild winless draw. Suter sends it down the ice. Suter, no surprise, closing in already on 16 minutes played in this game as Veilleux now had it knocked away, but the Wild that recover, and uh, here is Suter to send it all the way down the ice. It's just effortless how he goes about his business, too. You know, he never looks exhausted out there, despite the fact that he's out there half the game. Here is Cole across the line. Sends it back down to Sagan coming late. Sagan makes a nifty move around Bronziak. Now behind the net, still hangs onto it. Now rolls it in front. Nobody from the Stars could get a stick on it. Cole chases it down. Hands it off now to Goligoski. He'll send it down low for Jamie Benn. Benn looks to the front. Goes all the way to the far side. And misfiring on that was uh, Sagan. And Bayer hands it off. And Suter drives it down the ice. That's where sometimes maybe that shoot first mentality can get in the way. Rather than showing a little bit of patience and settling that down. Trying to fire a rolling puck in a twisting motion. And it just ends up killing about 20 seconds of their own power play. Now Harkoff across the line. He can just slow down enough to stay outside. Nice little passing play here for Whitney to the board. He's going to... Swept out of there, but it definitely crossed the line. And again on the power play with the two seconds remaining on the Fontaine minor penalty. It is 3-0 Dallas. Well, this is a passing recital on the tail end. Touch pass by Egan. Touch pass down. To Ray Whitney, nice patience. He sort of had to Ginsu night. This, this had to be like one of those nightmares for Kemper, the netminder, that it just in slow motion worked around the paddle of his stick and crept over the line. Prosser almost got there in time. Made it all the way over. Whitney, who just moved past the 1,300 regular season games played plateau. Gives the Stars their second power play goal of this one. This must be the ex Phoenix Coyotes scoring night uh, for <laughs> the Dallas Stars with Fiddler and Whitney, who have made other stops in their career as well. As Gonchar backhands it in deep. Grammed up on the corner now, Roussel. Tries to make a little play along the end boards there to Garbutt. And that uh, goes up on the netting and out of play. And they're talking about Ray Whitney, and uh, he has been around. In fact, he is the last player active from the 1991 draft. Remember that? Eric Lindros went first and said, well, no, I'm not going to Quebec. Yeah. Got Niedermeyer and Peter Forsberg, who ended up going to uh, Quebec and then Colorado. And Kovalev, Naslin, Ziggy Palfi, Chris Osgood, who's uh, doing television now for the uh, Detroit Red Wings. Uh, quite a list. Whitney was actually drafted as a center iceman, I believe, too, uh, coming out of junior in Western Canada. Started with the San Jose Sharks. Had some uh, big playoff goals for them early in, in their history. Of course, won a cup with uh, Carolina, and he's one of the guys that's very openly since the uh, lockout that, that cost us the, uh, the full season. Back in 04-05 uh, to say that the rule changes out of that have really helped him as a shot here and helped extend his career. Uh, Suter slides it across Brodeen. That comes it along now. Zucker trying to protect it with Jordy Ben leaning on him. And now Brendan Dillon saw that that puck was free. Chips it off the glass and down the ice. They wave the icing off. Boy, that's an energy diffuser, though, isn't it, for the Wild who were starting to look like they were getting themselves back on track here as this one goes for icing. Download the NBC Sports Live Extra app to watch the game live on your phone or tablet. The NBC Sports Live Extra app on NBCSports.com slash Live Extra and NHL.com.
Char and Eakin drew the assist on that power play goal by Ray Whitney. Brodine gets it to Heatley on the right wing side, and Heatley plays it back into the Dallas Star zone, and this will go far enough for icing with the just over five minutes razor remaining in the second period. The Minnesota Wild with seven shots on goal. And, and again, like you said, Dallas does it differently. They're, they're not defending, it's just they have the puck all Right, right. They, they want to play this game on their toes and on the attack, and, you know, this is somewhat reminiscent of the game on Saturday in St. Paul where they outshot the Wild by a, a healthy march and didn't give up much. And yet finished on the wrong side of things that night, losing in overtime. Uh, Coyle back the other way with Heatley. And the long range work shot handled easily by Lettinen. And now Sagan with Charlie and Coyle it, coming in on him. It's one and done, though, for the Wild right now, even when they do get these chances in the attacking zone. Well, Sagan put it high and wide there. Kemper, who came in with just remarkable numbers, the uh, middle of the Wild goaltender here tonight. In the last four games, the goals that ends up under one and a half and a save percentage of almost 950. He's kept this within reach here. And he's given up some quality opportunities here in the second. He's only been beat once. Now Granlin with it. Hands it off for Niederreiter. Far side. Lombardo tried to jam it in front of him. blocked by Rome. Another high stick. This yeah. time Gonchar got clicked. And they will take a look at that and we will get the call. But it looks like, again, the Dallas Stars with the man advantage. They've got a couple of power play goals already, including that one, and a 3 nothing lead. Bill McCown, Granlin in the box for high sticking. Power play number five for the Dallas Stars. John Char on the far side for Whitney. Whitney tried to jam it right to the front of the wild net. It's blocked, and Matt Cook sends it back the other way. I don't know how high the high stick was, but it certainly yeah. <laughs> contacted Gonchar in the face. He hands it off on the far side. Look out, that's deflected up into the bench area and out of play. We'll go back and take a look at this to see what you're talking about, Razor. Yeah. Up under the arm of Gonchar right there. Just a lazy play by Granlin. Puck's going around. There's no need to do that. Caught him right in the lips. So a uh, stick foul to Fontaine earlier was a costly one. The Stars with Gonchar as the primary guy up top made the puck sing and made the wild pay. Well, you look at the Dallas Stars coming into this game uh, for the season, Razor, and, and they're a team that has more power play chances than their opponents. But coming in, nearly 10 fewer power play goals. Now, they have gotten their power play going. But boy, when you're on the, on, the, on the power play more often than your opponent, that's usually a good thing. Yes. Well, I, I mean, it, it was mind-numbingly horrific on home ice for most of the first couple of months of the season. They were actually getting outscored by their penalty killing in this building. Yeah. Uh, Stefan Bayou will send it along in behind Lettinen. Beligoski will get it there. 3-0 Dallas with just over three minutes remaining here in the second period. And the Stars coming in nine points behind the Minnesota Wild. A look out here, a steal, and a chance for a break by Brodziak. Beligoski comes over, looks out, save me by Lettinen as he came out aggressively to steer that aside. The other thing about this power play, Kari Lettinen even talked about it a little while ago, that he used to rest when the Stars were on the power play. Now he's on his toes. Cook was in ahead of this thing offside. Earlier, Brodziak, a good board battle in their zone. Wins this puck, turnover by the Stars. Doesn't have the breakaway speed to get all the way in, and maybe a tad late in a penalty kill where the legs are a little heavier. Ready to go over the pad. Past the blocker and no problem whatsoever for Kari Lettinen to spit that one aside. Yeah, Dallas, as I was mentioning, nine points behind Minnesota that's currently tied with Vancouver for the two wild card spots after the top three in each division uh, will get in. And, you know, there's starting to be a little separation in the West. You got Phoenix within four points of uh, the two teams with 59, and then it drops down to Nashville with 51, and then uh, these Dallas starts with 50, although. Dallas has played a couple fewer games, so any points they can pick up in regulation head-to-head -head against one of these teams, huge boost for the confidence. This power play going nowhere. The, you know, I think every team is, is trying to bury their head and sprint to the Olympic break and, and then sort things out after that. 
Eakin with it now. Well, a shot saved by Kemper. Rebound on the far side. And we're down to the final two minutes of the second period. And the Stars without a shot on that power play. And what do we have is there was a change right as the puck came to the bench area. Suter was trying to go with the stretch pass up the ice and cranked it right into the Stars changing bench. I think Wendy Ruff is probably pretty pleased with the way things have unfolded here almost through the first 40 minutes. But it, you know, they scored three times, but but they've also only given up nine shots. I mean, they're in single digits. There's a conclave going on amongst the Zebras right now to figure out whether this should be too many men. Yeah, the one referee that was at center ice immediately put up the six fingers and they got together and, and they said uh, no, um, and here's why. They're all over it. So we're trying to get it up. <laughs> there's your interchange. And there's six guys there. Yeah. <laughs> So no penalty. Rodine angles it off the boards. This will be icing. As Daly was down there ahead of Niederreiter, and the faceoff will come back into the Minnesota zone. And That's an interesting play when you have D partner to D partner on a stretch play. That was Brodine to Suter <laughs> breaking down the left wing side. You know, he's, he's gotten a little of that Ray Bork in him, Ryan Suter, does he not? Where he gets off the ice, 20 seconds later, he's ready to go right back in again. Yeah. Well, Bork was back in the day. Couldn't fatigue him. Now, Suter angles it on the far side. Commonville able to clear this puck past Goligoski. It won't go far enough for icing. Goligoski moves it along, and Daly steers it up the near side. It'll be picked up with speed by Fiddler. Commonville. Roussel's hurt. Yeah, he, he he put a stick in there, and, and there was no call on the play. No, he was he was breaking into the zone, and, and Palmerville was right next to him. And he is in excruciating pain. Dave Zeiss, the Stars medical man, out to have a look at him. Well, there's the stick right there. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't much, but something happened. Might have took him up an octave with that one. I think that took a little bass out of his voice, Dave. Okay. Not quite as badly as uh, Martin Erad on Brian Boyle the other night no. at Madison Square Garden, no. but... Uh, they were having words on their way past me at center ice, and as they traipsed back into the star zone, or uh, wild zone, pardon me, that contact, Roussel seems to be... And the worst for wear. Easy for me to say. I'm standing between the benches with yeah. makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> and in the fog, too. Yes. I've worked my way out of the fog. The Wilds are still trying to get out of it, I think. Yes, there's Coyle in front of the uh, Dallas Stars bench, along with Heatley. And I think that came out and back in on the uh, line from Darren Gibbs saying uh, that's offside. We'll set this up for a face-off right in front of the a little wild bench. Another chance for a linesman to drop a puck. And there's Darren Gibbs. Uh, congratulations. Career game number 1,000 for yes. Darren Gibbs tonight. The pride of Fort McMurray. Oil Sands country. He's also a member of the Wood Buffalo One Sports Hall of Fame. How about that? Wow. That is special. And a, I think there's going to be a bench minor. Yeah, there's something going on here. I think there, there was just too much much verbal violence from the Minnesota Wild to my right. Ryan Suter wants to have a conversation with uh, the referee, that's Eric Perlath that he's uh, having the discussion with. I think there was a, there was a big conversation going on, and with the power plays as lopsided as they've been in the game, some frustration on their own play. You get this, and they they slap him. They got to get a guy in the box. Peter Ryder's going to come across to yeah. sit this one. And you know this has been part of the equation for the Wild here tonight too, and that they they haven't been able to stay out of sin and allow themselves to get any tempo to their game. 
Yeah, the power plays are now 6-1. Power play number six for the Dallas Stars. Time penalty, 1904. Wolodowski, two assists in the game. Sends it in deep. Jamie Ben Rapper on attempt was blocked by Darcy Kemper, and he holds it there. Stay tuned for the Discover Card intermission report. Coming up at the end of the second period. Talking about the Dallas Stars and their strong attack and uh, the Maple Leafs. Red Hot hit the Rockies. How about uh, Toronto? I mean, they, they win the Winter Classic and then they go into a tailspin. <laughs> and it looks like, uh, well, again, there's talk about maybe Randy Carlisle's job being on the line. And they turn it around and have one of their best winning streaks in about six or seven years. So from trading everyone to possibly winning the Stanley Cup in Toronto, kind of the way it vacillates. Yeah. Pass in front. And, oh, Sagan uh, cannot find a, a firm stick. No, that thing just Broke shattered. Twice. And an uh, opportunity for Shason following up. As there's uh, two different broken sticks on the ice. And they're both Sagans. Gets it back to the point. Saws one in half. Gets a new stick from the bench, and then that happened. Wow. Stick betrayal of the highest order. I think he'll be talking to his, uh, his rep tomorrow. <laughs> Down to 16 seconds remaining in this second period. 3 0 Dallas Stars. Fiddler, Cole, Whitney. All veteran guys. Here's Cole with a one timer save. Kemper rebound was there. But before Kaysan could get to it, Boy, the Wild able to clear. Does that illustrate the importance of faceoffs on special teams there? Ben, ben wins it straight back and cow bang. Here comes Sagan. Hands up for the save by Kemper. Who I think has been has been spectacular here. He's at least kept this within reach for the wild through 40 minutes. I don't think they're going to send him. I think this this buzzer went. There might be more time. Kemper came into play, having allowed just seven goals in in five games since being recalled to fill in, and he's made some sparkling stops here tonight. You now Sagan deciding not to try to take a shot with that new stick and. Made a pretty nifty pass there to set up shapes on in there. And it sounds like they're uh, possibly going to add a little bit of time back on the clock. Barry Lettinen is standing next to me, so there's not going to be enough time for them to be able to win a draw and get it all the way down the ice. There he is. <laughs> See how much time gets on. Add it on here. Well, this... It, you know, what the Stars will probably try to do where Sagan is the tail gunner is try to win this back. <laughs> they've, got, they've got six skaters out there, Razor. Looks like uh, yeah. gonna, Kari Lettin's going to say they're going to 1.9 seconds. They can't win the draw and get it all the way right. down the ice. Can they? No, there's there's, <laughs> there's not enough time. Ben's going to try to win this straight back. Brodjak, big strong guy, is going to try to at least tie this. Good job by Brodjak, and that uh, puts an end to that. And the second period comes to an end. And again, the uh, Dallas Stars, the team that was struggling coming in, just one win in their previous 10 games in the month of January. They have frustrated the Minnesota Wild, who have only nine shots after 40 minutes of play. 3-0 Dallas, the Discover Intermission Report with Russ J.R. and Keith on the other side of this. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Verizon, the official wireless partner of the NHL. And back in downtown Dallas, Texas, American Airlines Center getting ready for the start of the third period between the Dallas Stars and the Minnesota Wild Days Trader, along with our man inside the glass, Daryl Ray. And it's been the, the story of the Dallas Stars power play, which has another opportunity here to start the period race with that bench minor carrying over that there was called in the last minute of play for unsportsmanlike conduct. Well, and it's really taken the wild out of their game. They, you know, this one, a frustration penalty, but they took a lot early on, killing a lot. The Stars have made the most of two of them. Really awoken on the power play at ho here at home lately. Eight power play goals in their last nine home games. Now Tyler Sagan goes to work. Across the line, he tried to drop it back. Cook was there, clear for the wild back into the Dallas Stars zone. Now Goligowski drops it back, and here comes Jamie Benn. The Canadian Olympian carries across the line. 
Separated from the puck, though, by Cook, and he'll send it all the way back the other way. Now Sagan hands it off for Cody Eakin. Eakin across the line. That was blocked by Tory Mitchell and Scandella, able to flip it all the way down length of the ice. Well, that's two entries that played right into the hand of the Wild there where they didn't drive them deep enough into the zone to get set up. Every good penalty kill will just pounce on that at the blue line. Now here's Tyler Miller trying to play it back to the line. Neither rider serving that bench miner comes out of the box as the shot here doesn't get all the way through. Stars had uh, four shots on that power play, all coming in the uh, late second period portion of that man advantage. As Bayou plays it to the corner and Scandella clears it out to center ice. Montreal sends it along the boards behind Kemper on the far side. Scandella for Stoner sweeps it out to center ice, deflects away from Niederreiter, and Dillon plays it ahead to center ice. Fiddler pulls it across. Cole just off the bench with a shot. Save made by Kemper. And Suter able to get on the loose puck, sends it around. And Bramlin out to center ice with it. The Wild is starting to turn pucks over again on their way up the ice. It's twice in a row they've tried to come up right to center ice and then boom right back at him again. Now Suter takes it wide, angles it off the end board. Pominville is there. Jason Pominville right wide for Bramlin. Bramlin looks back to the front, deflected in behind the Dallas Stars net. And Dillon plays it up the far glass, chopped at by Whitney. Held in here, though, by Zucker. He'll go back after it now. Henry pass floats out to the top of the circle, and Cole has it there. He'll get the center ice line and send it deep. Just a frustrating night, I think, for the guys in white trying to get anything going. They just get no traction in this game whatsoever. Now to Chuskin. After a turnover by the Wild, back the other way. Hands it off Tyler Sagan. Tried to go back to number 43. And Scandella clears it out to the center ice. Coyle puts it deep into the Dallas zone. Well, Belagowski plays it around. Prosser moved in for the right point. Now this Minnesota team, as uh, well as they've been playing, seven wins in their last nine games, doing it with a lot of the significant guys out of the lineup. Daly with a shot that's handled by Kemper. And doing it by defending. And, and this is a different animal here now. They're going to have to get their defense a little more involved when they do get into the attacking zone. And... and Try to get more people involved in their attack because they can't defend their way to victory here tonight. No. They're going to have to score. And after this game here, uh, Rachel, they go home to host Chicago and then on the road to San Jose, Anaheim, Colorado, and Calgary. Yeah, they have a daunting little schedule ahead yes. of them. All of that coming before the Olympic break, and uh, they'll close out with home games against Tampa and Nashville. But it's amazing how many teams, it's not like the days of win one, lose one, win one, lose one. Teams are winning three, four, five, six, and then losing that many in a row. Right. But what a difference when you watch the Wild try to bring it in. A lot of times just give it up, try to get it back again. And if they do try to bring it in under control, turn it over. And the Stars are hitting their line with a ton of speed. Now Fontaine with it. Pushes it to the corner. Now Peverly takes over for the Stars. Angles it off the glass. Stays in the Dallas zone. But you long range shot. Letting in track that one all the way. Steered it to the corner. Now Fontaine below the goal line tried to wrap around and it's blocked up in the air and hits the netting. It is out of play. Let's go inside the glass and here's Daryl Ray. Talk a little bit about Tyler Sagan. Uh, speaking of people with a little frustration in their game right now, he's got eight tilts without scoring a goal. Here tonight, uh, in those eight games, he's had 30 shots. He's had tons of chances in and around it here, especially early on. Hit a post, taken 10 shots toward the net. Some have missed, some have been blocked. Of course, late in that second period, he was busy breaking sticks in half, so the betrayal. <laughs> yeah. A wry smile. He said in between periods he's going to turn into a disher. No more trying to shoot. Yeah. He brought four new sticks back out to the rack, so he's gone through a few weapons tonight. Now back the other way. A chance here is fired up over top of the net. But just casually closing on him is, is Ryan Suter there. A lot of guys would panic, but instead just gets over. Uses that stick to his advantage to run a little stick dictation. But turnover, turnover, turnover by the Wild. They, they can't get things in behind and then get possession of the puck right now. Now Jordy Benton with 
momentarily knocked off the puck by Zucker. They continue to battle. Fiddler in there as well. He's going at it with uh, Danny Heatley. And as the puck comes up the near side in uh, Whitney. Hoist it with a backhand in for De Kemper, and he will cover it up here. Wednesday night rivalry, NBCSN, Chicago and Detroit. They're not in the same conference, but they still are very much rivals. Tomorrow night, 8 Eastern. Pittsburgh and the Islanders from Long Island on Thursday night. And then uh, outdoors, the stadium series begins with Anaheim and Los Angeles. I think anytime you can get Kiss and Vin Scully in the same venue <laughs> and have a hockey game, it is something special. Hockey Palooza. Yes. Huh? Amy Ben now for Trevor Daly. Sends it along the boards behind Kemper. Rodziak with it. Now Cook drops it back. Stoner. Had to go back to him now. Brodziak in the corner looking out at the point. That just barely got through to Chuskin who saw it coming. Now angled off the boards and it gets by Stoner out to center ice. Little juggle here from Mike Yo trying to find some spark offensively. He's got Palmerville out here with Cook and Brodziak. Just been uh, a night where not a lot of things have, have gone well for Mike Yo and, and his hockey club here. They wanted a big focus area to be clean, brisk, systematic exits out of their own zone. That hasn't happened. They've spent tons of time taking on water in their own end. When they do get it up ice, they've turned it over, and because of that, they just can't find their game here tonight against a, a team that's playing with some urgency. Yeah. Again, for those that uh, joined us late, uh, the Minnesota Wild, who did not play last night, haven't played since they uh, hosted the Stars on Saturday. They had a morning skate, and uh, the Dallas Stars, who played in Nashville last night, were here this morning, but they had a closed-door meeting that included all the players, Coach Lindy Ruff, General Manager Jim Nill, Messes just get energy and emotion back into their game, and they executed better offensively than they did before. Beverly cutting in. Kemper took it away down low, and he continues to make yeah. some dandy saves. Indeed. But again, it can't be just defending, and it can't just be Kemper making saves. Somehow, the Wild have to get something going at the other end of the ice. For now, it remains 3-0. Following tonight's NHL coverage, don't miss an all-new NHL Rivals. Get fired up for tomorrow's Wednesday night rivalry between the Hawks and the Red Wings. Rivalry night coverage begins tomorrow, 6.30 Eastern, only here on NBC SN. And just to hear names like Grimson and Probert, the late Bob Probert, uh, those days when the, those teams battled each other in the old Norris division. The Hawks had to become them. Uh, in, in some ways, yeah, straight up against them. They're ever going to become a good team when they were building things in the Windy City. They had to get through Detroit. And of course, it was a, another memorable playoff series last uh, May that went to a Game 7 overtime. Brent Seabrook. Granlin sends it across. And Niederreiter steps it back into the Dallas Stars zone. Sagan. Slowed down there by Corey Mitchell in front of the Dallas Stars bench. John Trevor covers across for Rome. Plays it back into the Minnesota Wild end of the ice. Here's Suter with it again. Long stretch pass. Just missed connecting with Heatley. And now Lutton sends it back the other way. Now Tyler Sagan tried to get a pass through for Nachuskin. Kemper clears it himself all the way back to the Dallas Stars zone, and Goligoski has it there. Head now for Nachuskin. Makes a little move there on Ballard, trying to cut in. Now Horkoff with it. Put it right to the front. Bounces off Kemper. Wasn't sure where it was momentarily. Now Horkoff will play it back to the line. Daly rolls it back in deep. Nachuskin trying to pull away from Coyle. That's been a nice matchup to watch at times. Montaigne clears it for the Wild. Cook slides it across. Ballard getting involved in the rush. Hands it off now for Cook. Had to go back to Ballard. The pass went between he and Stoner. So the Wild have to back it up and regroup. Boy, this really hasn't been a heavy game at all, though, has it, Dave? Not a lot of guys hitting and taking physical play. 
Only with a shot that just missed as he made a nice move to create a better shooting angle. That's two good rushes by Rich Peverly trying to get interior. Stars right now, you just think it managed the puck, right? Up by three, about a half a period to go. Now you're right though, Razor. It hasn't been a, a, no. a game in terms of anybody on either side paying a physical price. I don't know that the, the Wild played that much of a, a physical game anyway. Right. A lot of speedsters. Cook, Nita Ryder are two guys that, that will take the body consistently, but it falls off after that. And we got a penalty deep in the Dallas Star zone. But you mentioned Rich Peverly having uh, created a couple of opportunities. Well, he's another one of the Dallas Stars forwards who hasn't scored much lately. And he's got great outside speed. Showed it a couple of times. One time around the corner, the other time just delay in patience. And both times answered by the big kid in net. Penley in the corner. A little too much, a little too much guff. And with the power plays as lopsided as they are, Maybe the guys in stripes and bands looking for something, so it didn't go very well on the opening power play of the night for the Wild. See if this one's any better. Yeah, just the one opportunity, Razor, and they failed to get a shot on goal with that first man advantage. They need something here with just over half a period remaining. They're down by three. As Granlin able to get it through to Suter. Hands it off high slot. Heatley shot was blocked wide before it got to Letman. They like to look for the high tip of Dan Heatley in the, in the high slot area if they can execute it. Not Granlin. Rink wide, good stick by Fiddler. Broke that up. Now Suter backs up. Takes a look and he drops it back. Granlin enters the zone, hands it off for Heatley. Drops it back for Pommonville. Sends it across quickly to the net. Blocked by Daly and Daly sends it out to center ice. Yeah, good pressure up top by Garbutt to force that quick shot and then just fold underneath from Trevor Daly. Good block. Uh, Eakin back to recover this puck for the shorthanded stars up the board that bounces off Pommaville and all the way back into the Minnesota Wild end of the ice. And we have passed the halfway mark of this third period as Darcy Kemper plays it up the near side. It's up to by Peverly into the glove of the Wild goaltender and he thought about covering it back up but Brodine's there. Now Coyle across the line. Tips it through a couple of Dallas Stars players. Gets a little separation. Angles it off the board. Brodeen hammers a shot here just wide on the glove side. Now Coyle again. Takes a look out to the line. Brodeen, good job to keep it in. Goes to Ballard. Ballard for the high slot shot. That hit the goal post. To the right of Kari Lettinen and bounced out behind the Dallas Stars goaltender. Now here's Coyle again. Tries to go far side. Ballard able to get it to Coyle. Now it comes to Zucker, he drops it back, Ballard waits, now he shoots high, and that was blocked by Dillon, he came out aggressively. Took it right in the gluteals, I think. Yeah. Boy, Charlie Coyle did great on this set. Now Fontaine, able to get it out high for Bodine, he goes to Coyle, Coyle's pass across was blocked as he was looking for Ballard. And Jordy Ben out of the box. And the crowd appreciating it, Kemper missed the puck, and that's going to step it in. Man, this will be that's going to be call. a goal. I think that's just going to be. Yes. It's a penalty shot? Yep. He, he threw, threw the stick. stick. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a penalty shot. What a strange series of events. <laughs> no, that I'm kidding. They come close to scoring from, from Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, one end. Not the best of decisions by Kemper to get out there, and then when he threw his stick, that puts the puck at center ice. So the Dallas Stars have a penalty shot. This will be their seventh penalty shot of the season, Dave. Unbelievable. They are three for six on the season. They've had two against them, so they've had eight of them in the games they play. And here is Jordy Ben, the defenseman, against Kepper on the penalty shot. Oh, what a move! What a move! Which Ben brother has the better move on the breakaway? Yeah, Lindy Ruff may have to clarify when he sends Jamie Ben to, or A. Ben to a shootout in the future. Is it Jordy or is it Jamie? This is a full frontal lobotomy with the Harley kick that Kemper bit hard on. 
and then worked it around. Anytime a stay-at-home, low-scoring defenseman ends up scoring, benches explode. <laughs> One of the fresh guys back in the lineup for Dallas who did not play in their game in Nashville last night. What a turn of events. Here is Mitchell back the other way. So both power plays for Mike Yo's team have been disastrous. Yes. And the Dallas Stars have taken advantage of every opportunity Woody Ben on the bench shaking his head saying that that wasn't that big a deal, but what a move on Kemper to make it 4 nothing stars. Play back in here with 8.20 remaining in the third period. 4 nothing Dallas Stars. They've scored two power play goals. They scored a goal just after a power play expired and most recently a penalty shot as a result of Darcy Kemper, the goaltender, throwing the stick at the puck. So what you're saying is that special teams can be important? Yeah, absolutely. It's a battle both ways. The coaches uh, want to win every night. No kidding. Such a big part of this uh, league nowadays, too. Goaltending and special teams trumps everything. Now Mitchell onside. Looks to the front. Good recovery there by Jordy Ben, who just scored that penalty shot goal moments ago as Ballard slides it across Stoner. Top of the circle with a shot. Save, rebound, chance, and Bayou kind of fanned on that. As uh, Razor, let's uh, take a look back for those just joining us at uh, how we got here. This one uh, awarded to Vernon Fiddler. It went off of Stoner at the side of the net. Yeah, the money one, and then they went to work on the power pool. You know, the wild with a polluted game in the penalty department made a pay here's the thrown stick i haven't seen that in a long time they put jordy bennett center the herky jerky on his way in to make this a four nothing game now brodeen with it and that's uh, ramped up high on the glass picked up by roussel and he'll slide it out to center ice the head by garbett brodeen is there though for the wild Just over seven minutes remaining in this one. There's Brodeen. Waits for his teammates to get onside. Took a hit there from Roussel. who was given a shot by Veilleux. Veilleux is going to come over at Roussel. Now Coyle along the boards. Still working hard. Throws it to the blue paint. And it's knocked away. Well, the Wild have been able to generate some stuff, and, you know, just prior to the, the penalty shot goal of Jordy Ben, that Ballard hit the pipe, haven't caught a break here tonight. Lettman's made some good stops here in the third, but, I mean, it, it, it has looked like a, a bit of a, a pillow battle with their offense here tonight, though, hasn't it? Not much going on for the uh, Minnesota Wild. Yeah, that's something that even with their 7-2 record that uh, Mike Gill was concerned about. And when you uh, have to win by defending, you can't give up the first goal, let alone the first two, first three. And Whitney, long range, and Kepler saw that all the way as uh, Stoner. And Fittler, I believe that is. Stoner's got the gloves off. Fiddler's trying to oblige it, but he can't get the, any space. I can tell Stoner's matter. Yep, and the linemen get in there. And they are separated. We're just under six minutes to go here in the third. Four nothing stars. This February, the world will converge in Sochi, Russia, as athletes from across the globe compete for country and Olympic gold. The Sochi Olympic Winter Games begin Thursday, February 6th on NBC. And as far as these two organizations, now there you see the Dallas Stars, three players plus uh, Lindy Ruff, who will be an assistant coach for Team Canada. The Wild, assuming these uh, guys that are injured uh, get healthy, Parisi and Koivu, along with Suter, Niederreiter, and Granlin will be representing uh, their respective countries there. And Three groups in the men's tournament with four teams in each group, a dozen teams uh, total. 
When you play everybody in your group once in the preliminary, and you win your group, you get a bye to the quarterfinals. And then they pick the second place team as this puck is covered up with the best record in the preliminary round, and that team gets a bye as well. So you could play uh, your three games, Razor, and immediately be in a single elimination situation. So much can happen so quickly in a tournament like that. I need a flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> well, Russia's got to flow through the U.S. because they're in the, yes. in, in the same group along with uh, Slovenia. It, don't you think it's going to be interesting to see how the North American side does against the the European and Eastern European and Scandinavian and what have you that are used to playing on a, a wider rank. It's yeah. going to be an Olympic sized rank. Russia, Slovenia, Slovakia in the group with the U.S. Canada in a group with Austria, Finland, and Norway. And the groupings are done, you know, based on your world ranking. And coming off the Olympic gold, Canada gets the, uh, the better grouping, if you will. But it is going to be just no. a phenomenal tournament. No kidding. Jason on, able to hand it off on the far side. Look for the return pass. And as he goes down, sliding, there's a hooking call coming here against the Minnesota Wild. Good net drive through the middle of the rink. And Minnesota penalty, 17, two minutes hooking. This has been the game that they have played tonight. They have and lock this up with penalties heading through the middle of the ring. Corey Mitchell has got good wheels, reaches out and has the hook on him. A lot of these penalties I think have been avoidable. In, in a lot of ways, Dave, the, the Wild have looked like the team that's got fatigue within their group, exactly. not the Stars. Yep. Goligoski with a shot into the glove of Kemper. Face-offs, face-offs, face-offs too. The, the Stars, especially uh, Ben and Sagan, have really dominated that stat throughout the game, so they've started with the puck a lot. Part of the equation to the 36-16 shot advantage the Stars have here tonight. So what do you think, another team meeting tomorrow to keep this rolling? <laughs> Just keep meeting in the morning. Goligoski's pass finds its way to Tyler Sagan. Uh, it's taken away by Prosser, and he'll play it ahead for Brodziak. Brodziak with a rising shot that goes up on the netting and out of play. Well, the Wild is starting to look like a team that, you know, how long can you go where you're getting outshot by wide margins and, and still winning? It, it's a, you know, a dangerous way to go about your business. Been fruitful for a while, but it looks like it's caught up to them here tonight. I mean, they've won when they've been outshot by... 40-17, 30-11. Yeah. But you can't do that repeatedly and and get the upside at the end of the game. And it doesn't look like they're going to get it here tonight. And, and doing that without their number one or number two goaltender. At, at times, right. With, right. With the job that Good Kemper's point. Kalagowski will it now. We'll start it back. There's Matuskin. That's deflected over the glass behind the Minnesota bench and. Lucky fan back there with a the souvenir. Well, the line we documented off the hop with Nachushkin there, and Ben and, and Sagan have been busy throughout the game, but it, it hasn't really been that trio that has been the tip of the spear offensively for the Stars here tonight. They've got to receive some pretty good efforts out of some others, if you will, and especially their, their power play with a couple of tallies in this one to make the wild pay for some of their indiscretions. A thrill for Nijushka, though, to represent Russia with... They kind of have a history of that, I guess, the the Russian Olympic Federation, where they have young players that they bring along as sort of the 14th forward, if you will. Right. And Burry did that. I believe McGillney might have been one of those guys back in the day. You look at the lineup they have up front with Datsuk, Kovalchuk, who's over there, of course, uh, playing in the KHL, Malkin, Ovechkin, Radulov, a former NHLer. Tarasenko is having a, a great season with the uh, St. Louis Blues as Cole tries to break through Scandella here. But, oh, is there going to be a lot of pressure on the home country? Oh. The four-time Olympian and Sergei Gonchar is trying to yes. spit that one up the middle. He had designs on going to a fifth, especially at home. Cook intercepts and just slides it all the way back down the ice with less than a half a minute remaining in the Corey Mitchell penalty. I mean, there, there's nothing going on between the two benches right now. This, I think both sides would go for running time in this one. 
Odin sends it all the way back down the ice. Lettman stops it there and hands it off. Yeah, that Russian team is a, a you know, blend of some terrific NHL players and also some guys that are playing in the KHL. Some names will be familiar because they have played in the NHL. There's some other names that we don't know so much about. Uh, Bayou was trying to make a play along the board, get some help from Howla, and now Brodeen picks it up. And Mitchell has served his penalty, and we're down to the final 245 of this one. And the pass for Mitchell now, one-on-one -on -one against Dillon. Changes the shooting angle, but Dillon played him well. We talked about the... Uh, the difficult schedule that the Minnesota Wild have coming up. And again, they're hoping to get Zach Parisi back, perhaps for their next game. Not so sure about Koibu before the Olympic break. Spurgeon's another one they're not sure about. And Peverly now makes a spin move, lost the edge on a skate, and it's knocked away. As this is the start of a five-game homestand for the Dallas Stars with Toronto, Pittsburgh, Colorado, and New Jersey. Yeah, pretty much a must-win for them here tonight. With as much as it's missing from the Wild in their lineup and having lost eight of their last ten and not scoring, they had to do what they've done here tonight. And it's almost as if the Wild right now are saying, you got us. One more time in this building. It'll yeah. be Mike Madonna retirement night. That's right. Not his career. He's done that already. It'll be a jersey <laughs> number. Well deserved for number nine. The Suter shot into the glove of Kari Lutton, and boy, he he got rid of that quickly. He he wants running time racer, and the yeah. referee didn't give it to him. Yeah. I guess the other watch would be uh, Kari Lutton with the uh, goose egg here. You know, and there's been some pressure heaped on him too, with the club not scoring and not winning. You know. Sometimes you just need a clean sheet from your netminder to make sure that you can get out of the funk that you're in. The Wild have certainly received that, not only from Kemper here lately, but I think Josh Harding's one of the best stories in sports, not just the National Hockey Absolutely, absolutely. As he uh, continues to battle MS and, and, and get the right balance and medication so that he feels right, gets the proper rest, and he was playing at such a terrifically high level. I mean, best goals against save percentage. You know, there was talk about him making the Canadian Olympic team. Uh, Scandella angles it off the inboard. Back out now to Ballard. Keys it up for a shot that doesn't get through. And heading to the bench is uh, Kemper on a delayed penalty call. Niederreiter banned on his pass attempt. And now as it's knocked away by Rome. Well, under a minute to go, they will make this call in the uh, wild. Barring any other penalties, we'll close out regulation and this hockey game with a man advantage. Last on the 55, minor penalty for slashing. Uh, came in that knot earlier in front of the net as the Stars were trying to throw up the full phalanx in front of Lettinen and preserve the zero. Not much, but trying to, in some ways, equalize the opportunities, but this is going to be too little, too late for the Wild with under a minute to go. It'll either help or hurt the statistics, that's all. Dallas jammed up on the faceoff. Comes free to Trevor Daly, who sends it all the way down the ice, and Kemper will hold it there. Final 40 seconds of this one. Peter Ryder is there, and so is Goligoski leaning on him. Well, we said it at the start, uh, Daryl Ray, the veteran leadership of this Dallas team needed to step forward. Fiddler, Cole, yeah. have done that on the score sheet. Goligoski as well. Larry Lennon has done the, what he's needed to do, although not very busy. 18 shots and not many at, at all testing him on the crowd that remains here. And American Airlines Center coming to their feet. Well, it was about the same way that it went between these two teams on Saturday. Uh, the, the difference execution, the Stars couldn't score, the Wild made the most of their opportunities, although they got outplayed in the game. Went the other way around here tonight. Uh, Dallas Stars full marks for the two points here tonight. 
Second shutout of the season and 24th of his career. For Darrell Ray and the rest of our crew here in Dallas, I'm Dave Strader. Thanks for joining us. Stay with us as we check in with Russ Taylor. NHL Overtime presented by Bud Light.